welcome to the Global Health Video Class. My name is Dr. Elvira Bericocchio. I'm the CEO and President of RealizingGlobalHealth.com. I hope that you have been really enjoying the Six Sigma series because it's really my passion when I see how well it works. And it works because, as I said, it is epidemiology-based, it's patient-centered, and it is evidence-based. So you can't go wrong with those three. Now today we're going to talk about how governments, how foundations, organizations that are working in global health can adapt Six Sigma and they have to follow these three principles that I just mentioned and then apply these tools. The first tool is there has to be leadership, there has to be policies that say this is what is going to be done and this is how it's going to be done in this country. If there isn't a nutrition policy or if there isn't an HIV AIDS policy or there isn't a maternal health or child health policy then it's time to review it because that sets the background for everything that we're going to do. It's really the foundation for how we're going to improve global health and how we're going to implement it in that country to make sure that that country accelerates its improvement. After we assess the situation, then we look at how that um, country is really delivering health services. When we assess, we look at how the map looks like. We look at how people are coordinating work, who is where, what areas are now being covered. Coverage and mapping all the resources is very important in the, in the assessment A stage. Then we measure how well is each of these components performing. Where, for instance, um, rates of immunization are lower, where rates of treatment compliance are lower. And we look at those differences and we look at ways in which those places that are high performing can help those that are not performing so well. And then after we assess and we measure, then we diagnose. We use all that information to diagnose what are the most important procedures, what are the most important steps that need to happen for every patient to receive quality health care. That's when we change standard operating procedures, we change job descriptions, we change um, supervision checklists, and we change work routines, patient flow. Um, everything is improved in a way that will meet a higher standard less than 3.4 per 1 million opportunities. After that we look how we can implement we actually go and implement those new steps, those new procedures, new, those new job descriptions, those new checklists that will allow us, and many other tools, that will allow us to really make sure that what we said was going to happen actually happened. And we can predict health outcomes. Health outcomes have to be predictable to a certain stage. Of course, it's always individual variation because patients come in different um, conditions, but it's important that we are able to predict on a large scale how well we're going to do. If we say we're going to cover 95% of the children, we need to make sure that we're actually doing that. And we need to make sure that those procedures that will immunize 95% or more of the children are really going to work. So I hope that you are thinking about how you can implement the assess, the measure, the diagnose, the improvement, and then control and make sure that we prevent those errors from happening again by continuously reinforcing and supporting and encouraging the health providers to provide always the best and follow the procedures that we have determined. So it may seem a bit complicated but it's actually not and it's really so comforting to have something that works and actually delivers results in a predictable way. So think about Six Sigma. Think, think how you can apply it in your own country, how your foundation, your organization can help bring that to more countries and more places and more hospitals, more clinics consistently. If we consistently bring Six Sigma to every health center, every hospital, then we'll be able to really make a big impact and achieve and really realize global health. So I hope you're enjoying this series and I'll see you next time for more Six Sigma in global health. Thank you. Until next time. Bye.